nonstop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. All right, we will do deep dives. Our initial plan, and we will stick to this, was to do a D.D. Westbrook deep dive, Rick Dennison, and that whole situation, refusing to get a COVID vaccine. So we will get into those things. But as we are about to hit the mics here on Purple Daily, Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, Executive Producer Declan Goff, presented by TCL. Enjoy more of what you love with TCL. We started catching wind of the Packers shareholders meeting. Ah, oh, boy, this is hilarious and glorious. Imagine if you are Mark Murphy and Brian Gutekunst, and you're going through the biggest professional crisis of your life, <laughs> and now today at Lambeau Field in front of, like, I think it looks like there's, like, 20,000 people inside Lambeau Field, all of the Packers shareholders who bought certificates on Packers.com. And you're going through the biggest professional crisis of your life, and you have to explain it to all of them. Like I told you guys on Mackie and Judd, it's basically like my three uncles in Wisconsin are like there to demand answers. I am a Packers owner. Why is Aaron Rodgers not going to play football for the Packers this year? Feed me information. And here it is from Tom Pelissero. Mark Murphy starts by praising Brian Gutekunst and saying he's the right person to lead the football program. And one guy yells, I've never seen him throw a touchdown. God, I love it. <laughs> and that guy... Go, Pat, go! And this that guy, guy just came off a barstool at Anduzzi's where he started <laughs> drinking at 6 a.m. <laughs> all those bars, all they day. all I know the area. Yeah. I know the area, man. I've been there myself. Got oh, it. man. Bill in Waukesha has got some takes on the Packers quarterback situation. Um, there's more here, too. Let's see. Some fans are lightly booing Mark Murphy as he walks out on stage. One fan waits for it to quiet down, then yells, Mark Murphy, fire the general manager. <laughs> But this is what you get and what you deserve when you sell fraudulent pieces of paper uh, to build additions to your stadium continually and tell the people who are basically, let's you know call a spade a spade, being ripped off, that you're telling them, you're an owner of this team. I mean, you've got a voice here. You can. This is what you deserve at least occasionally as far as because i'm sure they're all like oh these idiots why do we have to do this because you're greedy and you are is there a bigger snake oil salesman scheme in sports than this one <laughs> no i mean it's like what do they I mean, get <laughs> they, they, so you get to, you get to show up to the packers shareholders meeting we'll get you some free bagels and donuts Here. and then you can Here's just you yell got. things at mark murphy once a year Packers owner, I paid a hundred dollars. I own part of this team. Bring back Aaron. <laughs> bump, bump, but I don't go, Pack, go. Go, Pack, go. I will say, uh, before we get into actual Vikings things, hopefully for Mark Murphy's sake, as he's getting pelted with questions, he's on the hot seat. Hopefully he's got a pair of chill boys on. The oh. most comfortable boxer briefs. I got the most comfortable boxer briefs I've ever put on in my life uh, on right now here. And at Chill Boys, it's a Minnesota-based company. They are passionate about one thing, your comfort, chillboys.com. Um, Judd usually talks for eight minutes and derails the show when it comes to Chill Boys. <laughs> so we're going to put him in a timeout. Declan, okay. one word to describe how Chill Boys make you feel right now. Uh, performance. It's all about performance. And Brian Gutenkus needs his performance brand of Chill Boys to deal with this ornery crowd of Austin from Appleton and, you know, TJ from Oshkosh who are asking him all these hard hitting <laughs> questions about Aaron Rodgers. You need some performance brand on right now, my friend, and Chill Boys can help you out. Bamboo fabric. Those are the two words you need to know. Chillboys.com. Um, all right. DD Westbrook, new mm -hmm. Vikings third wide receiver and punt returner. Let's get into uh, what that means for the Vikings. So over the weekend, he started posting photos from his Instagram account, like, hey, I'm in Minneapolis, ham hey, at the practice facility. I do think it's kind of funny. Like, I, I people are reacting to this. Like, I'm, I'm all over Vikings Instagram and Vikings Twitter, and it's like, 
feels like people are reacting to this like one half notch below the way that we all reacted when Brett Favre showed up in a black SUV with Brad Childress. Like, right. finally. But then when you look at what the Vikings have been rolling out for a third wide receiver the last few years, it is huge. Like, the gap between Declan's guy Chad Beebe or what B.C. Johnson did last year and what D.D. Westbrook can bring as a slot receiver um, it does seem like a pretty huge solidifying signing. But what did you guys think when you saw that news yesterday? I think the move is probably more important or most important for depth purposes. So if Jefferson or Thielen get hurt, I think this guy can step in. I'm not saying he's going to be great, but I, but he'll he'll be an improvement on what the Vikings currently have on the depth chart. So I don't think that there is, and I, I might be wrong here, but I don't take this as, well, now there's a great competition for the third receiver spot. I perceive the depth chart to be Jefferson, Thielen atop it, and and Westbrook uh, a, basically in ink as the third I mean, guy. Ben Lieber tweeted that's going to be a great competition between Westbrook, yeah, Chad Beebe, and B.C. Johnson. Yeah. Our friend uh, Tyler Fornis, I think, tweeted this week that I want to say the Vikings only used a third receiver on like something like 27 or 29 percent of their snaps last year, so they don't much. So if D.D. Westbrook is going to be as impactful as some think, and I know we know the name, so it, it's exciting, um, the head coach is going to have to allow Clint Kubiak to allow Kirk Cousins to pass the ball more. If if they don't, I think it's more important that it's a depth move in case somebody gets hurt. Uh, but yeah, I'm not over the moon. Oh my God, you've got a third guy who's going to play a, a huge role. I think he could play a role, but until I see a seismic shift in how this team operates offensively, I'm going to say I think it's a nice move. It's an inexpensive move, uh, but it's not like a move that, okay, this sets you up now. This does not set you up. I think it gives you depth. Dex? Yeah, I I was talking to Judd on Mackie and Judd as well about how Third wide receivers sometimes don't make like as big of an impact as we've seen before. Like when they brought in Kendall Wright three years ago, remember? Like Kendall Wright was a nice receiver for the Bears, but then I think he even didn't even make the 53 man roster. Tajay Sharp, kind of the similar situation last season. So sometimes I think we do get a little too excited, and especially when it's a wide receiver. Um, and I like this though because it does give the team depth. Thielen's missed time with injuries. Keenan McCardell, the Vikings' new wide receiver coach, is really familiar with them as well. So I, I don't. I think it helps. The Vikings are, are not a three wide receiver deep team. They're going to run out those two tight end sets a lot, but it's a it's a good signing. Like I, I think this Dede Westbrook will end up being a, a pretty solid player, and especially with punt returning too. All you have to do is return one punt seventeen yards, <laughs> and we've already uh, immaculated <laughs> or surpassed the last year's punt total. So I, I do think he'll bring some value. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, he has a touchdown as a punt returner in his life. So that's a huge step forward. You know Bobby Wade. <laughs> he ain't no Bobby Wade. <laughs> You're not just going to sit back there and fair catch everything? Just curl up in the fetal position? Um, but yeah, the, 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 the ball's being snapped to the punter, and Bobby Wade just <laughs> back there. Fair, fair catch! catch. <laughs> fair catch! No, don't hit me! <laughs> um, but yeah, I, one, one thing to note, though, because we're, we're only thinking, well, the, you know, Tyler Fornis had the number 27% of snaps or whatever it was uh, with a third wide receiver. So you're not really using him much, but there's an, there's a 17th game, an 18th week, mm-hmm. and Adam Thielen has had some injury things before. You never know. Like, Justin Jefferson could go down for a couple weeks. Also, not to turn this whole thing into a COVID discussion, Adam Thielen's not vaccinated. So, like, sure. if, if he has to go on the COVID list for three or four weeks, who then becomes your number two receiver? And to have D.D. Westbrook step into that, role I think makes people feel a little bit better if you have to target him 10 times a game versus a Chad Beebe or a BC Johnson so um, you know how I think my biggest questions are what does he look like coming off the ACL injury how often will the Vikings use a third wide receiver in their offensive packages um, but he gives Kirk another reliable option here's a number and I don't have I don't have great context for how this compares to other slot receivers but I think this is good so he had 132 catches between his last two full seasons, 2018-19, more than half of those catches, 70 of them, went for first downs. So when 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 he was catching passes out of the slot in Jacksonville uh, for you know less than great quarterbacks, I guess there was the like week and a half run of Gardner Minshew that got everyone excited. 
like over half of those went for first down. So he just seems like the type of guy that, hey, Kirk, it's third and seven. I know you have tunnel vision for Adam Thielen every single time or Kyle Rudolph, who's gone now. D.D. Westbrook gives you someone that you can scan and see yeah. and throw an eight-yard pass to, right? So And, and Zim says run. <laughs> Dalvin can get it, Clint. But coach is third and seven. Dalvin can get it, Clint. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. we'll see. Um, I mean, that is a big question, though. How With, with all these weapons now, I mean, last yes. week, you know, the article from ESPN.com came out, and we and we discussed it, and the Vikings have the fifth best or ranked set of skill position players and that was before they brought in D.D. Westbrook as a third wide receiver. And so, like, you got all these weapons, and we can do a deeper dive into this later this week, but Judd dug up the numbers. Like, the Vikings were one of the five uh, least frequent passing teams in the NFL last year. It would be criminal if they didn't pass the ball more often based on the weapons and getting Dakota Dozier out, ideally, from starting at a guard position. Like, they should throw the ball more. I'm mm-hmm. not saying five wide shotgun, put Kirk in a weird spot. If it's three extra play actions a game, great, even better. But they should be throwing the ball more now that they've got uh, these weapons solidified. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And they, there's a lot of people that think that Clint is going to do that, but I keep saying this. It's going to come back to his boss. Does his boss allow him to, to do that? And just to transition quickly, if the run game coordinator is gone, do we have possibly less of a of a tie-in between Zim and that guy yeah. to run the football as consistently? So just to set this up, so the NFL has mandated. I think a lot of people are sort of surprised. Wait a second, you know the the Vikings did this. The, no, so the the NFL has mandated that all Tier 1 employees, so basically anyone with direct contact with players, coaches, trainers, anybody with direct contact, must be vaccinated. And if you're not, then you can't be a Tier 1 member of the football team. you got to find something else to do. So Rick (laughs) Dennison, who is 63 years old, he's been around the Kubiak offensive universe for decades. Um, He has chosen not to get vaccinated initially our friend Courtney Cronin from ESPN.com reported that he was just out that he had been let go or however you want to phrase it it sounds like there is a little bit of sort of back and forth happening still to maybe keep him in the organization somehow or to to convince him at the last second to get a yeah. vaccination um I don't know my, my quick thought is for a 63 year old man not to turn this into a big vaccination debate but like if you're 63 and you're not in amazing shape like you know Rick Dennison. Um, COVID itself is probably more risky than any short or long-term side effects from a vaccine. But this is his choice, and with it come to the consequence of all right, six-figure job like might just be out the window for him. Hmm. So, Phil, I think you have to be right in saying that they must have been hoping for quite some time now that they could convince him to get the shot because it doesn't make sense if you if you knew he wasn't going to do it and th- therefore essentially did not qualify to coach and you were certain of that I think you make this move probably in June because like we're days before a camp and and n- no matter what you think of Rick as a coach his job titles are important like he's not the assistant special teams coach the offensive line is a full-time job and keep in mind like it or not, and a lot of us probably don't, the run game coordinator, which means he schemes up the run for for the game plan, is very important to the guy who runs this team, and that being Mike Zimmer. So we can't just eliminate this and be like, oh, good, good he's gone. This is, you know, days before camp, this does become an issue as to who's going to replace him. Um, are they going to have to redo some things? We don't know. But what's really weird about the story is I was doing some research on Denison on Friday and went back. Chad Graff wrote a really interesting piece for The Athletic when when Gary Kubiak brought Rick in because they go way back as buddies and Rick coached uh, with Gary on the Broncos staff. Rick Denison's background like is in science. Like he has a college. He's got like a master's degree. This dude is not this is not a just a weird. I don't believe in the shot guy because that's just my lifestyle. He definitely has reason for not getting the shot, which I found to be more intriguing. Um, but yeah, there's the other thing I think that we should clear up too, because I, I saw this quite a bit when it came to this uh, this situation and some more. 
over the weekend was the whole thing on Twitter about, well, they can't do this. He's going to sue the Vikings. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Football League can do what they want. They're a private business. So if they have declared that to be a Tier 1 employee, that you have to get this shot to essentially do your job, if you don't, you're gone. The difference is with the players, they've got a players association which represents them, and yes. that's why that's the difference in. So so if the league and the players association had agreed, if players don't get the shot, they're basically suspended. That's all negotiated in the CBA. Uh, the league, with its own employees and and assistant coaches, fall under league and you know because they're team employees. You can be let go. So this is not yes. a. I'm going to sue you now. No, your basically coaching career for now is either over or on hold. I want to let, let just real quick because I'm glad you brought this up because that's been the biggest question. Like, well, how can they legally mandate? This is a free country, right? How can you legally mandate? That someone gets a vaccine, and so I was doing some research last night. Uh, first of all, it it is legal for companies to require vaccines, and they and they do it uh, for the safety of other employees. If they feel like there is a safety threat in some way, then they can. I mean, also restaurants can mandate that you have a shirt on, or they don't have to serve you, right? Like, it's not just private businesses can have a lot of leeway in terms of what they can and can't uh, require, and if you. If you go by the definition of medium to large companies in the United States, over half of them right now are mandating to some extent a vaccine to come back into an office or a workplace. And so it's not just the NFL. It's not uncommon. Um, A lot of people are also asking, well, what about HIPAA? I mean, how can like shouldn't your shouldn't Mm -hmm. your status medically be private? to whatever extent. Well, two things. Number one, the NFL literally has an injury report that comes out every week in the season yes. to make it public, you know, who has what ailment. Yes. Uh, but but HIPAA specifically only covers what health providers can and can't reveal yes. and disclose about your condition. So like the doctor's office that you went to to get a vaccine or not can't publicly say, "Hey, Rick Dennison didn't yep. get a vaccine," right? Um, HIPAA has nothing to do with what your company asks you to do. So the NFL is asking tier one employees to get a vaccine. They're not, they're not, you know, breaking your arm, but they will, they will send you to the unemployment line because they want these games to go off without a derailment in 2021. Exactly. So you can, you can choose to not like, you're not going to get thrown in jail for not getting a vaccine, but you might not be able to work for an NFL team in 2021. So, yes, the NFL can do this to answer the question. I think when it comes to sports, there might be nothing as misunderstood as HIPAA. It is unbelievable. So so just to give an example of, of when a person's privacy from a health standpoint is officially violated in sports— do you guys recall when Schefter got the doctor's basically report, very detailed, on, I believe, Jason Pierre-Paul? His and hand, ESPN, right? yeah. yeah, and ESPN, if I'm not mistaken, was sued because they tweeted out essentially a very detailed document. That's a violation of a person's rights. But if I've gotten the shot or if I have, to Phil's point, a hamstring strain, there's nothing that protects that. Like I can refuse to tell you if I've gotten the shot, but yeah, the league is built. The league is basically built on information to to provide, most importantly, gamblers. Yeah. Okay, but, but but here's the other thing too. Like, so when, when it comes to the players, the league can't mandate that Kirk Cousins gets a vaccine or Adam Thielen gets a vaccine. But what the league can do is, and you're seeing this right now, they can put a ton of pressure on by saying, "Hey, if your team has an outbreak." Yes. And you're forced to like have to postpone a game or cancel a game, then you get a forfeit on your playoff record. Yes, you get a loss on your playoff record. They can also mandate that vaccinated players and non-vaccinated players, while like can still play on the same team, that they have to go through different protocol for the safety of everyone in the organization. Yep. So, I think, and we're and we'll find this out this week. Judd's going to be at training camp. By the way, we're, we're going to unveil a little purple after dark new series for training camp a couple times this week. Interactive, taking your questions. So definitely stay tuned to the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Maybe a couple adult beverages 
and the Purple Daily Podcast. I've been dehydrated. I'll need You'll need some, hmm. a little bit of liquid. Uh, need some hops. Um, and so I think what you might start to see is, because yep. there were some reports about this, unvaccinated players with wristbands. Like, this is going to be a... The Buccaneers are doing that for sure. I saw that story. I don't so, know if it's across the board, but yes. I mean, and that's kind of, I guess, that's my next question is, you got all these guys coming in, and camp's going to start, and we're already seeing COVID tension among the Vikings, right? Like, Alex Madison came out on Twitter and defended Rick Dennison and said, I ride with you, coach. Uh, Thielen, Harrison Smith, and we think Kirk Cousins aren't vaccinated, but Pat Peterson has come out and said, anyone who's not vaccinated isn't serious about winning, basically. Yes. Eric Hendricks is pro-vax. These are all leaders on your team. Mike Zimmer has been vocally pro-vax, mostly because he wants to win football games, I would I, think, right? And he had to be, yeah. So, I, I mean, this that's one thing. I don't know how closely you're going to be able to monitor this from where you uh, will be covering, Jeb. I'm, I would be very curious to know, like, how does this COVID vaccine divide in the Vikings organization right now affect things from a football perspective? This whole thing, in my opinion is going to ruin the season for about two teams. I don't know whom, and I don't know exactly what, but you're either going to to have the Delta variant run through a team and wipe them out, and it's going to be a huge problem, uh, or it's going to be friction. I I mean, the Bills Bills are exhibit A right now, you guys. Cole Beasley is a hard liner. No vax. Stefan Diggs came back, and what, what was his tweet, Dex? Accountability. Accountability and availability. Yeah. Um, Jerry Hughes, I believe, said these are the best scientists in the world who came up with a vaccine and people don't want it. Somebody else came back and said, I'm not going to be vaxxed. I don't believe in it. So this is going to, I think, derail the season of a couple of teams. And I don't know if it's going to be the Vikings or not. But this, listen, this is the type of thing that 1000% is going to cause friction. Yeah. It definitely is. Um, and I guess it's going to be how well it can be managed by players and coaches as well, but yeah, it's going to get weird and it's going to get hanky and I just don't, I don't know for which teams, uh, but I don't see any way that that there's not going to be some type of head on collision here. Do you, I just don't Uh, see it. Uh, no, I think I, I think if 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 the leaders on the team, if Thielen, Harrison Smith, and Kirk Cousins wind up getting vaccines, I think all of this kind of goes to bed. I think if the, if your starting quarterback yeah. is over here and the rest of your team, I just think it becomes a problem if some of the key players are if some of the key players are pro vax and versus anti vax. I think it's it's going to be hard to build that full chemistry. If you can get all on the same page, I think you're off to the races. And speaking of off to the races. Brainerd International Raceway is putting on a great event this upcoming weekend. <laughs> Moto America is coming to the nice. BIR racetrack July 30th through August 1st. Um, we're going to get Judd on a bike that goes 190 miles per hour. No, no. I hope everyone has a great time. This sounds okay. like an awesome event. No. What, what scares you more, 190 miles per hour or carnival games? I'm going to guess that you put those probably in the same bin. But a lot of people think those things. Games. Carnival I love games them. Or, or rides. Well, that's a different one. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, but listen, games, no. if you're not a curmudgeon like Judd and you like 190 mile per hour <laughs> adrenaline rushes and you love the family-friendly outdoor festivals uh, like they provide with Motor America. Check them out. Tickets and camping information available at BIRMN.com. Kids 12 and under even get in free. BIRMN.com. Do it. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Do um, it. I don't think, like, I, I know that losing your run game coordinator and offensive line coach on the eve of training camp on paper looks terrible. And totally different circumstance, but we saw what happened a few years ago when Tony Sperano tragically passed away. And yeah. it was like, it was hard for people to, that's a total, I mean, that's someone dying. I mean, that's a different And Zimmer was scenario. devastated by that, I think. Yep. Um, this is more just like sort of an organizational logistical thing. Like, all right, now where does some of this work go to? Who's going to be working hands-on mm-hmm. with the offensive line, et cetera? The Vikings pass protection has been so garbage I just don't know that this is going to derail you. Like, if Rick Dennison wants to still work as a consultant for the organization and watch film and and sit at home and draw up some blocking schemes, like, and he can submit them to the coaching staff, like, he can still add value if they think he's valuable to the organization. But like, 
let's not pretend like in 2021, 2020, he was some like offensive line saint sent here to make everything perfect. They were not good at blocking last year. So mm-hmm. uh, that's my take on it. Your run game, your run game is good. It's important in, in large part because it's unfortunately, I guess, your bread and butter a, a lot of the time. So I wouldn't dismiss this as like no big deal, but it, yeah, I would never use the term derail. Um, I'm just a little bit surprised if you wanted, if if he was basically adamant and said, I am not going to get this shot, I would have pulled the plug on him in June and, and made arrangements then, and perhaps they started to, I don't know. Uh, but I don't want to dismiss this as meaningless completely, because I don't buy that, but I also don't want to try and sell this as, eh, season's done now, Rick Dennison's gone. So I think it fa- I think it falls like I said in statements, it falls in the category of something you don't need right now, but it's not like an adversity that you can't get past. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think if you're if it, if there's a pie chart of praise for the Vikings running game, I don't know that Rick Dennison gets more than five percent of it. <laughs> Like the, yeah, I, the, the the overall Kubiak scheme I'm not gonna, yeah. gets some of it. Dalvin I'm not going to debate you it. completely. I just don't. I I saw tweets of like good riddance. So I'm glad he's gone. This is not the type of thing that you really want as training camps about to start. That's I think, my only. Yeah, point. I think just from like a workflow standpoint, like like yes. it's one thing if you think that he's a bad offensive line coach or that he's you know just replaceable. If you're going to replace him, ideally it would have been months ago, so that whoever takes his place isn't just like scrambling. Now, maybe they've known about this, and it's just now becoming a public thing, and his replacement or replacements have been shouldering right. some of this load since June. And they do have guys picked, according to Courtney's piece. Um, the one thing that I will say is, as long as the offense runs the way that it currently runs and flows, Dennison you know, coached an offensive line that could run block well. He schemed the run game, which clearly was good. So I guess... <laughs> If Zim, if Zim is now going to say, you know what, I'll pass more, I'm all for it. But if he's still going to say, damn it, we're going to do what we did with Rick, then I don't think Rick being gone is a great thing. Because the offensive line, to be clear, has really struggled in pass protection. In run blocking, they've been solid. So this all, de- but I am all for Mike going to Clinton saying, I think we should pass the ball more. In fact, I'm all for that having taken place three or four months ago. Mm-hmm. All right, we have another update from the Packers shareholders meeting here, if you guys want it. Go, Pack, go! Three people threw up. <laughs> three? Yeah, th- I'm sorry. The- <laughs> 35. <laughs> 300. <laughs> Good point. All right, Mark Murphy said on Aaron Rodgers, we want him back. We are committed to him in 2021 and beyond. All. That's what he said. So hold on a second. So if I've got this faux piece of paper and I own a piece oh. of this team, I because I've been ripped off. Okay. Oh, we have major. Whoa, we have even more major what? Aaron Rodgers news. Go, Pat, go. All right. Ian Rappaport, Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers has indicated to people close to him that. What do you guys think? What do you think about this? That he's not coming. He's not coming. That he does plan to play for Green Bay this season, sources say. That is the expectation. Many factors at play, but with GM Brian Gutekunst saying he's hopeful for a positive outcome, there is a glimmer of optimism. Go, Pat, go! See, here's the pro- but here's the problem. I think the players, I, I think the friends or the people close to him who are... In- indicating this since he's basically ostracized most people from his life are either teammates or former teammates and they're hopeful. So like when David Bakhtiari is like, Oh, he's going to show up. And I think AJ didn't AJ Hawk say this months ago. I think he's going, I talked to him. They're all wishing, but until I actually hear from a person who's legitimately close and has no skin in the game, I don't really trust this. The other thing too, is if he comes back and, and you know, obviously the, the same uh, last dance photo as Devonte Adams being sent out. It's like, first of all, you guys aren't Jordan and Pippen, all right. 
and I'm I'm mostly pro Rodgers with this feud between the Packers because why would you draft his replacement in yep. the first round when you have a Super Bowl window that was weird? Yep. Yep. But at the same time, like you guys have, like you're really really good, but you've never like they've never been to a Super Bowl, right? Devonte Adams and Aaron Rodgers. The last Super Bowl nope. they've been to was ten years ago. And I know that we're in a, a Vikings glass house here, but yeah, no, I guess not. I guess my question would be. How much, if he comes back, how much do you truly fear the Packers? On paper, it's all there, but it just feels like the chemistry, one bad game, right? Like, if something goes wrong in the first yeah. month, it just feels like everything could derail. But he could also offensively completely shove because he, he knows that yeah. he'll be gone. The one thing is the last dance uh, picture that they posted – Photo could have meant a lot of different things. And one thing it could have meant for sure, though, was that they are going to come back and they'll both be done after this. I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to read. It's so much it's so much fun, but yet BS uh, drama. But the thing I was going to say is if I own a fake piece of paper and the president of the team is now telling me that Aaron Rodgers is going to be the quarterback in 21 and beyond, here's my question. Then why did you cause all this by drafting Jordan Love? Because they were wrong. Now, but, they thought he was. All, they thought Rogers. Was I know, tough. but you, but you, pissed off the quarterback who you clearly now want back, and and you used a first round pick on a guy whose contract you are actively letting go to waste. Like the whole thing of having Jordan Love is playing him in his rookie contract. Mm-hmm. Like if you're well, going to be the like, thing. that's the it, weird it makes thing. no sense. So think about like the the circle of events here. Okay, so Aaron Rodgers. And this, there's more to it than this, but Aaron Rodgers thinks Brian Gutekunst is a moron. Yeah, and he's saying because he's a moron, then he needs to be he needs to be taken out of the organization, right? Yes, that's part of it. Yes, and the Packers are basically saying, "Well, we want you around for multiple years, Aaron, because we think you're the greatest," which validates Aaron's opinion that Brian Gutekunst is a moron for misevaluating it two years ago. And wasting mm-hmm. a precious first round resource when they could have traded up for Justin Jefferson. Instead, they trade up for Jordan Love. It's like it's like the Packers agree with Rodgers on that front. Yes. And yet Brian and, Gutekunst still works for the organization and he's the one speaking on behalf of the situation to all of the Bobs and on Alaska at the Goody shareholders is a, meeting today. It's ridiculous. Goody, Goody is a stooge though. He is a Patsy. This is Mark Murphy. Mark Murphy thinks he knows football. I guarantee you this pick. No matter how much they would both deny it, this pick was a Mark Murphy pick. He's an idiot as far as football goes. He played at Northwestern, I think. He played. He, I think he played pro, so he thinks he knows this. He thinks he's a GM. You're a moron. But I mean, this this Jordan Love thing. In fact, if I'm in Lambo right now and I got a hundred dollar piece of paper, I riot. <laughs> I storm the stage. I riot. I'm drunk, too, of course, because I'm a Packer fan. But seriously, think about how stupid this all is. Oh, that's amazing. The Favre that's amazing. thing made way more sense. I can defend him on Favre. Yeah. Well, Rogers Favre, is a, you know, Favre was a drama queen. Rogers is even more of a drama queen than Favre is. Yes, he is. But in Favre's case, they did tell him, what do you want to do? And he said, I'm retiring. And then he had buyer's remorse too late. And they had said to him, in fairness... They went back to him that April and said, are you sure you're done? Because we are turning the reins of this team to Aaron. And Favre said yes. And then like in June said, oh, wait. So that was much more of a problem caused by Brett as well. This is as big of a drama queen as Aaron might be. This is all on the Packers for screwing this one up. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, ordinarily, when you're a business and you're looking for risk management tools and you're looking to minimize bad things that can happen to your business. Federated Insurance would be the company to call. I don't know that they work with football teams. You can find a full list of industries that they work with on federatedinsurance.com. Auto services, contractors, dealerships. Uh, yeah, I guess the Packers are contractors, right? They're a bunch of bunch of 53 contracted employees. I don't know. Give them a call. Mark, Mark Murphy. See what you can put If together. you're smart enough. <laughs> Um, but find out how Federated can help protect your business, help maximize the success of your business. The insurance world can seem overwhelming, and so let them do the heavy lifting, helping you find coverage to best suit your business needs. Federated, where it's our business to protect yours.
All right. Well, we're sending Judd to Vikings training camp all week long. Tomorrow, Spielman and Zimmer speak on the Tuesday before Wednesday practice. And we're going to be pumping out daily episodes. So everything that, whether it's news, whether it's storylines, whether it's our own uh, pontifications, you'll find it all every day on Purple Daily, plus some bonus Purple After Dark episodes throughout the next few weeks. So we're pumped. This is it, baby. We've made it. We've made it through the eight-month off-season abyss. (laughs) Yes. We're here. Also, we've got on the Mackie and Judd show, we've got – NHL trade deadline, Major League Baseball, uh, or not trade deadline, league year starting, NBA league year starting, free agency for both, Major League Baseball trade deadline, all kinds of stuff, and bonus Vikings discussions, Mackie and Judd, Minnesota sports. Uh, We just want titles on Mackie and Judd. We just want a title for the Vikings here on Purple Daily. Very simple request. So, all right, boys, good conversation. We'll see you tomorrow on Purple Daily.